Hello everybody, long time no see. <laughs> so the reason I am talking to you um, face to face today is because I wanted to do a little introduction to this particular video and give you a bit of backstory to explain why the video setup is a bit different. So Last week I bought a um, cardboard model, a decoupage model of a unicorn because I love unicorns, believe it or not, <laughs> and I wanted one in my home. Um, the only unicorn that I have at the moment is a painting I did a while ago, so um, I really wanted uh, like a 3D model I guess like a unicorn to have in my home. So I bought a cardboard unicorn <laughs> and uh, I brought it home and it didn't look particularly special. Um, it had a few dents in it and his horn was broken off so uh, I guess you could call him a rescue unicorn. <laughs> I wanted to fix him up a little bit, so I brought him home and uh, I started working on him as a sculpture project. So I've added uh, paint and paper and clay to him and he's looking a lot more like a unicorn should. Um, so as I said, this video is going to be a bit different because um, I started working on him a few days ago and um, I didn't think about it at the time but um, I started painting him and I thought why don't I record it so you guys can see his progression from um, cardboard model to sculpture. So a lot of this video is going to be um, footage of me um, tweaking him and making him. Uh, but the audio I am actually recording separately at the moment. So I will be talking over the video, um, but it won't be live as such. It will be like a post-production sort of thing. Um, I've also included a lot of photographs so that you can see what he looked like before I started working on him. So you kind of get an idea um, of how he looked before. So, um, sorry for the rambling, <laughs> uh, but I hope you guys enjoy all the same and I will see you very soon. <laughs> so here's the original decoupage model that I started with. Um, this was pre-bought, as I said, but he was very damaged, so he is my rescue unicorn. Now you might notice I'm fixing the back of the leg, and this is because uh, on the original model, I didn't like the way the tail was wrapping around the leg. Um, it looked a bit like it was part of the leg, like it was a growth of some sort. So I wanted to re-break the leg and smooth out uh, the tail part so that it was ready for me to add my own little touch to it. So I'm using air drying clay, just simple everyday air drying clay for this. And I'm filling in and re-sculpting as I go. I use this technique on the other legs as well. Um, I put a little bit of clay on the hooves just to weigh him down uh, at the base because as you'll see in later clips I used a lot of clay on the main part at the top especially so I didn't want him being top heavy. So it's very useful if you're building large sculptures. Here it is, dried off, so you can see 
roughly where I've gone and then I've also added a little bit at the back of the tail which will act um, as my guide for the next part. So here's the start of the tail and again I'm just grabbing a very big piece of clay and I'm just placing it down and around the leg um, so this is basically improving on what was there originally and I'm not doing anything fancy I'm just smoothing it off at the edges to attach it to my model and again this will be part of the base for the tail so it has something to fix onto now I used about two, two and a half blocks of clay so it was a lot of clay work that went into this but it was well worth it and hopefully you'll be able to see from the end pictures just exactly why it was worth all the hours that I put in. <laughs> so I made this sculpture over a matter of weeks. Um, the original clip at the start for the intro that I did she recorded um, just after Christmas and it's now February the 4th so that'll give you some sort of time scale for um, filming and editing. Uh, overall I must have filmed about five hours of footage and I've condensed it down to about half an hour I think. So what's going on in this clip at the moment is I'm trying to smooth out some clay and I'm adding it to the tail so this is where I start to create the volume and the shape of the tail. So I'm just doing this gradually, adding little pieces towards the top to give it a sort of a teardrop shape so it'll be wider at the top and then trail down to the leg. Being very careful just to smooth it out and just down the sides and the back because you don't want it falling off once it's dried. So now we're swinging round to the front and this twist effect that I'm doing at the moment is how I will do the hair for the unicorn. So I started on the front mane and this is a very simple but effective technique um, for making curls in clay. It's a very fiddly process but um, you'll see as I go along just how to twist it. Uh, you want your clay to be fairly wet um, so it's very malleable and you can mould it easily. So in a moment you should be able to see it. Yep. You want to just string it out into a very flat sort of sausage shape I guess. And then you just want to twist it around itself. I'm doing here, just like that. Okay, and then I'm gently lying it into position. And at this stage, you want to be very delicate with your hand movements because you don't want to ruin the curls that you've just created. So I'm just gently fixing it to the top. smoothing it out to make sure that the join is good and strong so again it doesn't fall off if it's dried and tweaking the hair a little bit okay. I did have to clean up after myself quite a bit um, obviously 
clay is very messy and it gets everywhere so I had to be very careful. So now from a side view, this is me making the main part and as you can see the pieces of clay have gotten um, substantially bigger and they are much more liable to break. So I'm having to be very careful here and in my head I sort of picture where they're going to go before I place them, that way um, it's minimal sort of moving and um, working with the clay. Um, as I said I don't want to try and handle it too much once it's on the sculpture because otherwise it will just flatten it down and it will ruin that I put in it. So I'm just gently working down the ends of the hair and trying to place them. Okay, so I'm just following the hairline down to the front. And it's still looking pretty flat at the moment, but as we go along the video you'll notice um, once I've added more and more layers that it really starts to give it some character and it should be a lot thicker so again grab your piece of clay and just twist leaving a little bit straight at the top just to attach it to the mane and curl it down. Now at this point I'm also breaking bits off because I'm using the smaller bits to hide the uh, join in the mane. And the beauty of clay is, is that you can add um, bits to it whenever you like. Um, As long as you wet your pieces first, it's fine. Just don't let them dry out too much. Okay, so again, twisting. I think this was the most tricky part of the entire make. Top. So these ones are a bit thinner now. There we go. So there's me joining on the second part. Like I said, it's really easy just to attach more pieces, um, whereas it's slightly less, you know, easy to go back on yourself. Okay, so here is the horn. And to make sure that it stays in place and it's really strong, I've attached it to a bit of um, wood, a little bit of doweling, and I'm just sculpting it now into the shape that I want. Okay. So the horn, um, if you want to make your own, uh, you simply roll out a very long sausage of clay, then simply wrap it around your piece of doweling, making sure that the top end is the thinnest because that will be your point. And here I'm just attaching some more clay just to make sure that when I pop it into the gap where the main is that it will fit nicely and it shouldn't wriggle around too much. worried about um, how the bottom of it looks at the moment because eventually I end up putting a little bit of hair around it to mask where the join is. Um, the 
important thing is that um, he's actually got the horn on and that it stays put. So at the moment it's more about structure than how it looks. Yep, there we go, just popping in a bit more clay into the gap there. So I'm sort of using it like a polyfiller at the moment. So for the horn, I had to leave it for quite a few hours to dry off um, by itself because I wanted to make sure it was completely dry and stable before I even attempted to paint it or add any embellishments to it. I really didn't want it to break off, so. I'm paying a lot of attention to it to make sure that it looks right. Because after all, a unicorn is nothing without his horn. So, it's important to make sure it looks correct. Now I'm just smoothing out the bottom part, making the join a lot neater, and adjusting it. And in a moment, here we go, uh, you'll see me use a little trick to keep the horn upright whilst drying. So I'm popping a little bit of clay onto his nose in a second. Um, So in a moment I will pop a bit of clay onto his nose, um, there we go, just to uh, hold it all in place and I have another piece of wood that I'm just measuring up to keep it in place. So Okay, I'm just going to pop it on there. kept it in the position I needed while he was drying. Um, you'll be able to see at the bottom of the horn where I put a little twist of hair just to cover up where the join was for the horn. And because I didn't press the piece of clay particularly hard onto his nose, it was very easy to remove and it didn't give any permanent damage to the sculpture. So while I leave that there to do its thing, I'm just adding some more bits to the mane. And you can see from where we started at the top, it's a lot thicker and it's giving it a bit more character and life, I think. working around the base and the end. So he has a lovely long mane. The twists are also getting a lot more delicate because they are smaller and they're coming to the end of the mane. So there we go. Just give you a twist around. So that's what the mane looks like. Now, this is uh, in the daylight. This was about a week later. So the horn's dried and uh, the mane's dried. And I'm now giving the first coat of paint a good dry over. a little, little time to do um, because I had to give him at least two coats. Um, so I did it all over. I even painted all the clay parts just to 
sort of make him one uniformed colour. Now I'm just adding a little bit more white paint to some of the areas that I think needed a bit more attention. And I've also mixed a, a satin gloss uh, in with this. And this is, um, I believe the brand is Deco Art. Yep, I'm using Deco Art um, paints and uh, satin finish. I'll put uh, links in the description box for all the materials that I used if you would like to make your own unicorn or maybe something similar. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to be working on the tail and you can see I have my base um, strands ready to uh, attach the rest of the tail to. Make sure my hands are nice and wet for the clay. And I'm going to be using the same technique that I used on the mane. So I'm just prepping my clay. Just lengthen it out. So you want sort of flat strands for this. difference um, here is that I left about an inch at the top of the strand mostly flat and then I began to twist it more towards the ends. So I'm just anchoring the top of the strand, smooth it down and then I'm starting my twist. At this stage, it's kind of like working with ribbon. Um, it's very delicate, um, but if you keep your clay damp enough, it's pretty flexible and you can sort of fold it and mould it to however you like. Okay, so I've done one side and now I'm going to move round to the other. Just move him round. You can see um, it's really starting to get some shape and a bit of volume, especially towards the top. Lengthening out my piece of clay. <laughs> Almost looks like a slug. <laughs> I didn't know it's still now. Okay. Making sure it's they're fairly wet and malleable. Prep the top and attach. Smooth it out. Very important to make sure it's attached properly at the top. Coming down the strand and twist. It's as easy as that. All the way to the end. Okay, and mold it around. So it's kind of in a sweeping motion, the tail. So it starts on one side and kind of curls round a bit. 
I'm just making sure it blends nicely into the other strands. Just adding another piece. So here is the tail. I'm just going to give you a good look around so you can see it properly. He's quite heavy at this stage now, um, as he has a lot of clay on top of him, so it's a little bit difficult to move, but you get an idea of what he looks like so far. So now I'm starting to paint the mane, and for this I'm using um, a mixture of three different paints. They are called Dazzling Metallics. And they are also by Deco Art, and I've mixed them with a little bit of um, the graduate acrylic green paints. Now, the reason I've mixed them and I've put metallic paint, especially with it, is I loved the effect that it gives. Um, you'll probably see it in the pictures and the um, sort of ending video clips, but when you move the model round, um, it gives it a nice shine and makes it sort of look very sort of fantasy, I think. It just gives it that little bit extra to make it special, and I love working with metallic paints. So um, my husband and I had a very long debate <laughs> over what colours to paint him. Um, originally, because my favourite colour is purple, as many of you know, I wanted to paint him purple and I then thought about maybe doing a um, steampunk style unicorn. I was going to add um, cogs and some, like, a couple of goggles to the top of his horn and and some chains and bits, but um, we went through several different ideas and colour schemes um, we discussed together. Um, and in the end, uh, we settled with a woodland theme. Uh, so I wanted him to be a forest unicorn, and once that happened, <laughs> uh, this sort of happened. So you can see on the main the metallic paint has dried and it's given it a really nice shine and finish. Now I'm adding leaves to the top of the, the tail because I wanted it to look like um, it was sort of growing out of him, if that makes sense. And I also wanted to put a couple of leaves on his um, hind legs back legs, um, just sort of trailing down. Um, one of my friends commented that this reminded them of My Little Pony. Um, when they were younger, they used to have um, symbols or things on the back legs, I believe. Um, it's been a long time since I saw My Little Pony. Um, don't quite remember, <laughs> but I just wanted to add some extra detailing to him to make um, him a bit more unique. So I thought, as he is a forest unicorn, he should have some leaves on him. So I'm just cutting these out of flat pieces of clay, and then I scored into them um, just some lines. I wanted to keep them fairly simple. Uh, I varied the sizes a little bit just to make it more interesting. So I have 
a few little ones at the top. I was going to add some flowers, um, but in the end I decided that I would just stick with leaves. I may add some artificial flowers to him at a later date, but for now I was quite happy with just having the leaves. bit fiddly because um, they were very slippery and they kept falling out of my hands when I was trying to um, stick them to his body. <laughs> so um, There's a lot of me sort of dropping them and slipping around off camera. <laughs> they were very fiddly. But once they stuck and they dried they were fine. So you can see me here just using a knife and they're uh, touch dry, so they're sort of tacky. Just scoring some lines in the leaves, just give it a bit more detail. Being very careful not to cut straight through the clay because it is still like butter at this stage. look um, feather-like at the bottom, I think. <laughs> okay, so um, my leaves are dry and I've added another strand to the tail, as you can probably see, and I will paint that um, again. So I was just doing a little bit of tweaking. Um, I wasn't quite happy with the back of the tail so I've been doing a little bit of moving and adding bits. Now as you can see here he is covered in glitter and the way I did this was I gave him a coat of a very very light green paint and then I took my white glitter shaker so it's just loose glitter and I completely shook it all over him. So I had a massive sheet of paper on the table for this. So if you're going to do a lot of glitter work, please cover your workstation or area because it gets everywhere. Um, we still found glitter in the carpet weeks later, so <laughs> beware. But it was totally worth it. Now I'm using uh, the same brand, uh, the Deco Art Metallic Paints, and I believe the colour is Festive Green. Again, as I said earlier, I will put um, all items in the description box. So I had to give uh, the leaves two coats um, just to make sure that colour was at its best and its most vibrant, but I really like the metallic look. So here we have Peacock Pearl, and this was a dry brush metallic effect that I did to the back of the tail. I used it on the mane as well, so that will be the shiny effect that you can see, but I didn't dilute it literally I just dry brushed it onto the surface and just to pick out certain areas of the tail that I wanted to highlight it just gives them a nice shine it just makes it look more glossy So you can kind of see it as I move him around. So we go from a matte green to a slightly metallic sheen. I didn't use a lot for this. It's 
literally just a few drops on my brush and just gently dry brush over it. we have the finished product. I added some um, styrofoam mushrooms to his tail to add the woodland theme, so underneath his hair, and I covered his mane and his tail in a gloss varnish this time. Uh, I believe it's by Americana, it's called DuraClear and it's a gloss varnish, so it gives him a really nice high shine finish. I've also popped a few um, fake leaves in his tail as well. So here's the original image and here's my finished sculpture. So I'm so proud of him.